The new M3 Max MacBooks are insanely fast, but they do have some annoying issues that have been enough for people to start returning them. In Cinebench, the M3 Max smoked the M2 Max and the M1 Max, which if you look, the previous scores were not that different compared to the new one, but at the same time, the M2 Max's fans were barely spinning while the new MacBooks were going full blast. And even though in Logic, the performance was mind blowing, the fans were so loud that it might not work for music production if you're really pushing the machine. So I wanted to do some digging and exploring and test out something that I haven't looked at for a while and that is the low power mode. And let me tell you guys, my mind was blown what this mode does to this new machine. Now, before I show you guys that, I wanna talk about the high power mode as well, because with previous MacBooks, it would only make a difference if you're on battery power and if you're maxing out the CPU and GPU, but I found something that was very peculiar, and that is when I ran some tests on battery power, we got a score of 20,781, but then running it plugged in, I got a score of 21,389 nine which was noticeably higher. So I was thinking, are we running into an Intel situation where the machine performs differently now? Well, there are some differences, but what I found is that the high power mode can actually give you better performance when in the past with the M2 Max and M1 Max, it wouldn't make a difference. And with that, I had another discovery. These new M3 chips should run up to 4.05 gigahertz for single core, which is super high but sometimes I would see that they would only go up to 3.85 at a peak. Even in Geekbench right here, it showed it as that when I opened up the program. Running a single core test in Cinebench, I got up to 4.05 for the performance core, which is exactly what it's going to need. And then I tried it again, but this time it didn't go over four gigahertz at all. And it was running at about 3.8 for single core, even though our temperatures here at the top were running at about 70 degrees Celsius. Now I tried this both plugged in, unplugged, high power mode or automatic. And what I discovered is it's not really the high power mode that is helping this. It is actually just the temperature of the whole machine and the chassis. There's some kind of a temperature limit where it won't give you the full 4.8 unless your whole system is cool. And in this way, these new Apple M3 series chips are acting kind of like Intel chips where their maximum advertised clock speed will only be reached if the chip and the computer is very cool. And in a way that kind of sucks. Now with that, I also noticed this, look at that section that says fans turned off by hardware. I have not seen this before where I'm trying to max out the fans to cool down the system to verify all of this, but the system is overriding what you want to do in TG Fan Pro and it doesn't let you. Now with that, would you believe that these new Macs use more power than the old Intel i9 overheating MacBooks did? I didn't believe it either. Looking at this, the machine actually hit close to 60 watts. It actually ran at 58 watts at peak and thermal throttled and slowed down here and then kicked back up a little higher and then slowed down again because even with the fans maxing out, there's just not enough cooling for this much performance. The M2 Max maxed out at 39 watts and averaged about 36 compared to averaging about 55. So that's way more power that is required for this crazy performance that it gives. And another way these new laptops are just like the old Intel ones are that the fans ramp up almost instantly after starting, uh, which is annoying, but it's good for cooling. And with that, the maximum we ever saw was 102 degrees Celsius compared to 104. And with that, Apple is preferring to run the chip cooler here at 96 degrees Celsius, but with the fans completely maxed out instead of at 103 degrees Celsius, but with the fans running quieter. And that is resulting in an annoying loud machine, but one that is running a little bit cooler overall. And now let's dig into low power mode and let me blow your mind. 
These new laptops are based off of three nanometer, and some people said that doesn't make that big of a difference, but in fact, it's actually multiple generations newer than the M2 Max, and the M2 Max in low power mode gets 12,200 in Geekbench 6. Now that is not a bad score, but I avoided using low power mode because it didn't save that much power, at least previously. The M2 Max ran at 2.7 gigahertz in low power mode and didn't use that much of the efficiency cores. And with that, two of the performance cores were completely shut off. The M3 Max, on the other hand, uses all of its cores even in low power mode, and it runs at 2.4 gigahertz per performance, and it absolutely hammers the efficiency cores now. And overall, it's using 22 watts compared to the average of 24 watts with the M2 Max, so it's using less power. And let me show you what performance we get. This thing got a score of 16,721 in low power mode. But it even beats out the M2 Max running at full performance. This is no joke, guys. We have 19% more performance than the full-on M2 Max, and it even peaked at 26 watts compared to 36 watts. So we have 90% more performance with about 30% less power used. So if you were thinking about returning the M3 Max or not buying one because of heat and fan noise, well, you should think again, and this is gonna get crazier. In Cinebench for single core, the M2 Max uses 7.5 watts of power and runs at about 3.4 gigahertz, while the M3 Max runs at three 3.8, 400 megahertz faster and only uses four and a half watts of power. So you would expect the performance to be worse, right? I mean, we're using 40% less power, but nope, we got a score of 139 compared to 120. That is 16% more performance while using 40% less power. And it gets even crazier. Like I showed you before, we're using 22 watts compared to 24 and the clock speed is at 2.4 gigahertz compared to 2.8. And the result is 1,177 compared to 810. That is over 45% faster while using less power as well. And that is actually 29% faster than the full on maximum performance M2 Max. And at the same time, this computer ran with the fans at the slowest speed possible at only 90 degrees Celsius, so it's staying cool, completely silent, and still smoking the M2 Max by 29%. So if you were having second thoughts about the M3 Max, do not worry and do not buy an M2 Max instead, because you can get way better temps and fan noise and way better performance by just enabling that low power mode setting and it is more than fast enough. Now we talked about CPU performance, what about graphics performance? We were a bit disappointed in the scores because the difference was very small in our metal compute test. And with that, the M3 Max used quite a bit more power as well. But with low power mode, the M2 Max got a score of 124,000, peaking at 35 watts of power. That is almost the same power usage as you normally would get. But the M3 Max scored 143,000, almost 144, peaking at only 24 watts. That is a huge difference in terms of power usage. And at the same time, it is 16% more powerful as well. So these new three nanometer cores, even for graphics, are very impressive, but wait till you see Cinebench. Here, the M2 Max used an average of 20 watts and scored 5,004, whereas the M3 Max used an average of 15 watts and scored 9,607. That means that it used 25% less power, but scored 85% more in terms of performance. And I think that is insane. And the biggest issue with these new M3 Max, other than the price tag, of course, uh, is that they run hot and they run loud. But with that said, just using the low power mode doesn't decrease performance a huge amount and it still smokes the M2 machines while running way cooler and way quieter. So if you haven't tested it out for yourselves, I would because these things run so well in that mode. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Click that circle above to subscribe. Check out that video right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.